Hi, I'm Kate Morse, Program Director for the Copper River Watershed Project. I'm here by the Copper River, which is drained by an area roughly 26,500 square miles, or the size of West Virginia, in South Central Alaska. There's about 5,000 people who live in this watershed, half in the mouth at Cordova, and the other half scattered throughout Alaska native villages and rural communities in the Copper Basin. There are five species of Pacific salmon that return to our watershed and support the subsistence, sport, and commercial fisheries of the region. Salmon are the lifeline of our cultures, our communities, and our way of life. The Copper River Watershed Project is a nonprofit that works to promote a salmon-rich, intact watershed and culturally diverse communities by forming partnerships for watershed-scale planning and projects. While we're based in Cordova, we work throughout the copper drainage to bring together partners, resources, and expertise to help benefit the watershed through resource monitoring, restoration, and education. And I'm excited to be here today to share with you some of the work that we do in watershed education. The goal of our watershed education programs are to create informed watershed residents who understand the importance of an intact watershed for salmon and their role in helping to sustain the health of the watershed. We've been thrilled to partner with International Year of the Salmon participant and Ambassador Tommy Sheridan from the state of Alaska, who is also from the community of Cordova, who tapped in to students in the Copper River watershed as part of his research out on the Pacific Explorer. By creating these opportunities to connect students with guest scientists and researchers, it helps to make regional science relevant and inspire future scientists, resource managers, and resource harvesters who understand the importance of these natural intact ecosystems to support the resources that support our way of life. I'm even more thrilled to have the help of the Kenny Lake third through fifth grade class who's going to share more about their experience participating in our salmon and watershed education programs. And I hope that this inspires you to find ways to connect with students in your region to help make your science relevant and to help inspire students who might be able to fill your shoes someday and keep the great work going forward and keep salmon returning to our rivers. Hello, my name is Jennifer Hodges. I teach third, fourth, and fifth grade in Kenny Lake, Alaska. I've always been enchanted by salmon and the journey that takes them full circle to carry out their life cycle. As a little girl growing up in Oklahoma, a world far away from the travels of a salmon, I still soaked up everything I could on these fascinating fish. For my students, salmon are swimming in their backyard but their world exists mostly with fish wheels and dip netting to provide food for their families. Participating in salmon in the classroom has really expanded that world. They have not only observed, but have interacted with salmon in the first stages of their life cycle. When they release the salmon fry, they also collect samples to see what types of food are available, how much, and what are they competing with for that food. Their eyes and their minds overflow with wonder and curiosity. What did you like about having the tank? I mean, why why did you want the tank in the classroom? What did you enjoy about it? The salmon. The salmon. I enjoyed Eliza. watching the salmon around us. Watching the salmon swim. Uh, I enjoy having the salmon around us. I enjoy having the salmon around us. That's, That's what I, I feel. I feel safe. I grow up. Watching the watching salmon, salmon growing up, like what else? Like I grow up. Oh, oh. When your teacher tells you something about an idea on what to do as your homework or something, uh, you get to look and uh, get ideas from the salmon. We did that it's a really lot. really good. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Hi there, Kate Morris with the Copper River Watershed Project. I'm here with the Kenny Lake students at Strelna Lake, and they are about to release the salmon fry that you helped them raise in their classroom. And so we just wanted to say... Thank you! And I, some of them have even volunteered to share some of their favorite things about the project. So who's going to go cry? They make me feel warm and happy when I'm in the fish tank. When you're in the fish tank. <laughs> awesome. All right. Who's next? Nehemiah? It's uh, comfortable. It gives you an idea. Also, much more better than doing math. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Preston? Um, it makes me happy when I see them. Excellent. And our last? It just makes me happy to be around them. Excellent. And is anybody having fun today in Chess Waiters? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's carefully release these fish and wish them well. Yay, bye. Oh, hey, honey. I'm just going to do a little bit of an intro here.
Okay, I, can turn on. <laughs> I worked with a commercial fisherman in Cordova named John Platt and with Kate and others to get an educational permit to go out on the Copper River Delta and, and catch some uh, king and sockeye salmon to incorporate it into the school lunch program. And that was just one of the coolest things I've ever done and I'll always be grateful for that. And this was the boat that I was on. It's uh, the Northwest Explorer. This is a commercial um, fishing vessel that was chartered um, to, to do research. So these folks, have been... this shows here that actually there weren't a lot of pink salmon caught. And so that was that was interesting. And people didn't really understand why that was. And uh, Kate and I and others will learn a little bit more about that um, late, later next month when all of the scientists present on these results. What we did catch were a whole lot of chum <coughs> salmon or dog salmon. And so the green circles and triangles that you see out there, <clears throat> that was that was the boat that I was on. And so mm -hmm. that's why I collected so many chum salmon scales, uh, because we, we found a lot of them. I really want to thank your teacher, Jennifer, um, for <laughs> taking a chance and just doing that in, in the spring, and likewise for incorporating this into your class. So thank you all. I think this is really cool. Being able to connect with Tommy an accomplished scientist who was out in the ocean studying salmon captivated them. They saw that he was asking some of those same questions and collecting some of the same evidence, but out in the deep ocean while the salmon were in later stages of their life cycle. They were also able to connect with Sabrina, a scientist studying salmon sharks, of which they asked probably a million questions. These experiences have not only expanded that once small world, but it has opened up doors to worlds they didn't know existed. Liam, what did you enjoy best about connecting with Mr. Tommy? That it inspired me to explore the deep blue sea when I get older. Very nice. Were there other questions for Tommy? Anybody else have a question? Thank you for doing this with us today, Tommy. I have a question. Thank you. Thank you. Without people like Kate Morse, Tommy Sheridan, and Sabrina Garcia, who invest their time and knowledge to not only educate, but to inspire kids to find their passion, my students would not have these opportunities. It's exciting to be part of that. <laughs> Thank you! I really want to be a scientist when I grow up, and I really, really hope you're there to see me.